Hi folks, it's Andy. Welcome to this week's Kendo Rant. Okay, so here we are for another week of fantastic questions. We've got quite a lot to go at today, so I'll jump to it in just a moment. But before I do, don't forget to help us grow the Kendo population by 50 million billion people by the end of lunchtime tomorrow. All you have to do is like, share, subscribe, write a comment down below using the word Kendo, okay? And then YouTube sets out a crack team of ninja robots to get more people to start Kendo. That's definitely how it works. We're pretty sure now that that's how it is, uh, is, is working. We've had a billion people start since yesterday. We're aiming for another 500 million billion people start to, by tomorrow. So all you have to do, like, share, subscribe. You have to write that comment. What a great Kendo video. It's the best Kendo channel ever. Wow. Kendo is amazing and so is this channel. Something like that so that the robots make sure that they start people doing kendo and not like get them start doing like, you know, knitting or crochet or something like that. Okay. It's really important that you do that. All right. More importantly than that though, if you like this video and if you like the videos that I make, whether it's these Q and A videos, whether it's, uh, the feedback videos, I put a feedback video out yesterday. We did a, a review slash an analysis video last week. I did it with my daughter. We looked at her video from, uh, the WKC. I do instructional video. I've got more instructional videos coming soon. Leave a comment as well. Let me know what you'd like me to do an instructional video about. Um, that'd be pretty cool. Um, do all sorts of stuff and it's all free. It's all free. I don't charge you subscription. There's no membership fees, nothing like that. I don't charge you for subtitles, none of that stuff. All you have to do to support us, and this is the best bit because it's a real win-win situation is shop at kendostar.com. And kendostar.com is the best Kendo equipment website in the galaxy, history of the galaxy, universe, multiverse, every verse, and everything, all right? It's the best ever. Now, of course, I would say that because I own the place, but everybody agrees with me. You can check our trust pilot rating. You can check everything, all right? Everyone in your door just probably using Kendo Star already. We are the original and the best international Kendo shop for the international community, okay? We're not just reselling stock from somewhere else. We're not middlemen. We're not operating out of our garage or our mum's basement or something like that, okay? We're an established brand, especially for the international Kendo community. Get to kendostar.com as the Japanese ancient proverb goes. I think it's from like, I think it's from like the um, ancient warlord, um, uh, Kato Kiyomasa or one of those guys. I think um, he said, everyone's a winner, baby. That's the truth. All right. And that's what you get when you shop at kendostar.com. Okay. Let's get to these questions. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Any comments on the Shinban award in Ippons during Super Zeri? I found them biased towards the Japanese team when they, uh, when many times of Brazil, France, Canada versus Japan, uh, when opponents were separating or breaking up, the Japanese player would strike and be awarded. Uh, what's the point of having new rules when it's not judged properly? All right. All right. This is the last statement I'm going to say on the uh, this topic regarding the WKC, all right? I'm not going to tell you my opinion of the quality of Shinpan at the WKC, right? Because I don't have one, because I'm not qualified to form one, all right? Okay? I'm not qualified to form one. I've never done Shinpan at that level. I haven't been part of the, I was part of one of the Shinpan seminars for it as a translator. I wasn't part of the, 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 the Shinpan seminars that happened before, uh, after, you know, directly before the tournament. I wasn't part of the Shinpan meetings. I have never had the experience of Shinpan at that level. So I am not qualified to sit here and say those Shinpans were, were, were bad or this was bad or that was the wrong decision, this or that. All right. Now what I will say, what I will say is when, you know, we look at these things, you have to remember, <laughs> you have to remember that there's more factors at play perhaps than you might be aware of, yeah? Um, so you're talking about separating. Well, the rules, frankly, the rules for separating are, they're not, they're reasonably grey, but they are extremely nuanced. And you have to be an extremely experienced and knowledgeable shimpan to judge them correctly, right? Now, what that, what I mean by that is that Maybe it's the case 
that there are times you can hit hikiwaza from tsubazariai that are correct and ones that are not correct and the understanding how to judge between them is uh, difficult to understand and maybe when you see an experienced and qualified shinpan award a point that or not just one but a team of three award a point uh, as valid maybe that's the correct decision and they know better than us who are watching from the outside all right or maybe they made a mistake all right they're human either could be the case but it doesn't matter all right so um i'm kind of i'm not going to get drawn into this they were biased this way and i don't my personal opinion is that i didn't particularly sense an overwhelming um, sort of bias for any particular team. Um, personally, um, I think that there's, uh, do I think that 100% of all the decisions were made were the correct ones? I think that would be an unrealistic thing to say um, in any tournament. Um, and I think that, um, I think that uh, on, on the whole, I think this, the Shinmans did a really, really great job. I'm not even going to get into this whole thing with the final, all right, because I know there's controversy surrounding the final, but I'm not going to engage in that because, one, as I said, I don't think I'm qualified to talk about it. And two, I'll be honest, I think I think the Shinban in the final are getting a bit of a hard, hard, uh, hard time over it when they, I think it's a little bit unjustified, if I'm honest with you. I think if you go back and watch the video from the point of view of somebody, uh, when I say you should go back and watch it, I mean, <laughs> um, if you've uh, if you ever if you've ever done Shinban at a, a, a level like um, like international level, then it's it's probably worth going back and having another watch at the footage because I think, you know, I know there was a lot of stoppages in the match, but actually a lot of them seemed justified to me. Um, so although from the spectator's point of view, it was for kind of frustrated. The match was getting stopped all this time, but there quite, quite a lot of it was justified, frankly. Um, whether it results in hand soccer or not, whatever. But uh, f from from my unqualified point of view, so... So there we go. But I'm not going to sit here and say that was wrong or right or wrong and this was wrong. Of course, the Shinban is human, all right? And of course, there was going to have been mistakes made. There's never That's always going to happen. Happens every particular, every every single Shi'i that's ever happened in the history of Kendall, right? But, and we accept that. That's part of the agreement that we make when we join these competitions. Um... But for me to sort of sit here and start criticising or spouting off the opinions on how the Shinpan in that tournament carried out their duties, I just don't think it's, it's I don't think it's appropriate. I don't think it's uh, fair. Uh, and I just don't think I'm qualified. All right. I think it'd just be, it'd be me sat in my armchair shouting at the TV. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, it wasn't the TV. I was there in person. But you know what I'm saying? Like, uh you know the meme. Uh, so, so yeah. Um, I mean, we should all just chill a little bit, those of us that are a bit stressed about the Shinpan uh, at the WKC. I think they did a good job um, and they gave us a brilliant tournament. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> Uh, next one, um, apart from uh, Kirikaishi, Kakarigeiko and Jigeiko, what's your favourite and most effective form of practice in a Kendo session? Something that you find really beneficial for your students? Well, uh, Jigeiko is probably not on that list in terms of beneficial for my students. Um, Jigeiko is probably like, it, Jigeiko is, a very, it, it's a, it is and can be a beneficial practice, but it's one of the least beneficial ones. Um, especially if you're like under fifth dan. Um, I'd say, um, once you're like fifth dan and trying to challenge Rokudan and, 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 and above, then Jigeko becomes more important. Um, but below that, it's, it's, it's not as important as we'd all like it to be. A bit like kata. I know a lot of people would like kata to be more important than it is, but, and when I say important, important for your kendo development as a whole. Um, go on, bash away on the keyboard. Go, bash away you. Go on, do it, do it, do it. God, it's not that important. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, but look, um, Kirikaishi is fundamentally crucial to your uh, improvement in Kendo. All right. Uh, so is Uchikomi. Uchikomi is uh, what I refer to as Uchikomi is where like repetitive, repeated strikes against the motodachi that is presenting openings. Um, because uh, I, I said I, I qualify that because different Ichikomi doesn't mean the same thing everywhere. Um, <laughs> um, and 
in Kihon, just practicing Kihon, straight Kihon, Waza Geiko, practicing Waza techniques, um, and Suburi, <laughs> Suburi, super duper important. Um, and Jigeiko is a bit important, and of course, Kakari Geiko is, is, is very, very beneficial as well. Um, so yeah, uh, but practicing Uchikomi is good, and it can be really simplified Uchikomi, really, really simplified. Um, so you could do like three or five men strikes, uh, just big men strikes, get the opponent to open a course, and then just um, try to do it in a single breath or in one, you know, one set flow. Man, 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 get the feet working, get launching off the left leg. You know, you have to concentrate on when you're doing it. And any practice is only as good as how hard you apply yourself to it. And I think one of the biggest reasons people don't progress in Kendo is because they don't fully apply themselves to the practice. And they often think they are applying themselves to the practice, but they're often not. All right. You have to really concentrate every single time, every Kirikaishi. Every time you swing the shinai, is this is this the best I can do, and can I do it better? Um, what we tend to do is like, oh, sensei said do kirikaishi. Okay, yeah, man, 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 man. Okay, I did it. Now what? Are we doing jigeko yet? Are we doing jigeko yet? Like it's it's kind of like it's a filler before we get to jigeko. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's uh, that's the key, I think, to um, to really improving. All right. Uh, next one, uh, though it's quite rare for people to tie their men from the top, uh, i.e. Kansai style, um, well, it's, rare, I mean, it, it's rare in a lot of places except Kansai where it's reasonably, reasonably common. Um, I still wouldn't say it's super common. I don't usually see a lot of tutorials out there, especially in the HAKF's book for Kendall Guide. Uh, yeah, you won't see it in there. Uh, would you consider uploading a video on how to tie a men this way? I don't know if there are a lot of nuances to tying it this way, hence why I'm asking. I tie my men this way for personal preference and it just feels more secure for me, although no one asks. Thanks a lot, Sensei. Okay, um, you won't find it in the AJKF's book because it's not like the AJKF official way. Uh, it doesn't mean it's wrong, it's just not the way that they sort of it's not the standard way. It's a, it's a non-standard way. Um, so, yeah. Um, would I make a video of how to do it? Potentially, but I don't time them in like that. I don't time them in like that. So, like, I feel a little bit weird. And I'm not sure, like, I mean, I guess I could do it. I don't, I don't have any Chichikawa or Hashaku, eight Shaku Menhimo, though. Uh, you need longer Menhimo to do it, generally. I'll probably get away with it because my head's tiny. Uh, but um, you often can, you know, uh, often need longer ones. Uh, I don't know. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. All right. Um, I don't. I don't use that method. So I used to. I I, I had a period where I did because I thought it looked cooler. Um, but uh, I changed my mind on that. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, I'll think about it. Okay. Okay. Next one. Uh, where's the end of this? Okay, this is a long one. Okay, let's let's get to it. Let's get to it. Okay, uh, perfect time to have a question. Good, this is the right place. Uh, I started a new Kendo group at our university with uh, Shinai support from Kendo Star. By the way, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I did this already several times, and the first times I started to show them to show them Kendo how I learned it. Endless talking and resulting in that. Uh, very little time for doing in the end. This time I changed it a little. After doing three months strict clean basics up to Kirikaishi, we now set up a second training a week where we practice kata for 30 minutes and then doing 60 to 90 minutes suburi with Bokken doing sets of 200 to 500 once. After many years of Kendo, I realised myself when the muscles get tired, uh, the body seeks automatically the optimal optimal physical way for most efficient and relaxed movement. This is definitely true. Uh, we do that now for about two months and I see massive progress in regular Keiko by the people uh, that join the tough sessions regardless on uh, what we are training. Questions are, what are your thoughts on that? Would you support or deny such an approach? Uh, what do you do in your club to push beginners? Uh, side note, my students are all half my age, are young, fit and have endless energy compared to me. I'm aware I can't do that with 50 year old people yet. Um, why is it that in Kendo, every teacher does the endless talking thing? <laughs> uh, the more I progress, I realise that doing five times more Kirikaishi helps more than doing 10 minutes philosophy on the angle you should do Suryage, for example. Uh, is this a Western culture problem to over-theorise everything? Uh, I think, I don't know if that word exists or not, but I'm going to, it's got a red line under it, but I, I accept it. All right, I'm going to say it exists. And I'm English, so I'm allowed to say so. 
Uh, thanks to the shop. Uh, thanks in shop at kendostyle.com. Okay. So let's have a look at this. So what are my thoughts on it? So you're taking, right. So first off, you're, you're doing the right thing, I think, in terms of the principle of what you're doing. And I think that the method of what you're doing is generally good. Okay. Especially, you know, get just get them doing the basic, get them doing kirikaishis. Don't stand around talking, explaining nuances, like you say, of suriage or so, or like kizeme or kigurai or something, something like that. Um, then, you, so here's, here's, here's where I would do it differently in your situation. All right. So you're doing another training a week where you're doing 30 minutes of kata. Every week is too much. You don't need 30 minutes of kata every week. All right. Um, now, if you want to do it for fun, cool, do it. But don't pretend that that's making you better at kendo. Right? You can do 30 minutes of kata a month uh, and you'd get just as good at doing the kata. All right. Um, I tell my students that they should practice kata at home and then we do, we can once a month at the dojo, we'll do, we'll, we'll, I'll look at it and correct any mistakes and then they go off and do it themselves again. Um, <laughs> I don't waste my dojo time doing kata. They should do it at home um, and then uh, I'll just fix it. Uh, like I say, once a, once a month we have a fixed session. Um, and then your 60 to 90 minutes of suburi with a bokken. Um, right, here's what I would do, right? 200 to 500 suburi. It's all right, but it's not like, I think you get more out of it. Here's Because uh, you're definitely right on this, right? About the muscles getting tired, you, you just automatically start to, falling this is definitely true but if you really want to if you really want to push that a bit further and do a bit better out of it drop the subudi um to down to like 200 all right you do 200 in less than what, 200 subudi is like what 15 minutes is it even that is it even that i don't know i've not done 200 subudi in a while <laughs> not all at once in a row uh but like 100 subudi is not that long right so Let's say it's even 20 minutes. Give yourself half an hour to do 200 subiri, right? And then you still got another two hours, uh, an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do 30 minutes of kirikaishi. See how they feel after that, right? That's harder than doing 500 subiri. All right. Oh, I think I see what you mean now. You're doing 90 minutes and doing them in sets of 200 to 500, but you're not just doing 200. I get you now. I get you. I get you. Just do one set of 200. And then use the rest of the practice. Just practice loads of kirikaishi for like half an hour. Then do another half hour of uchikomi. And then like do some kihon or something after that. And I, I think what you'll do is where they're going, where they're going, where they're going like this from what you're doing, where they're going like this. If you do that, they'll go like that. Or they'll all quit. <laughs> Um, uh, what do I do in my club to push beginners? Yeah, well, look, my club's not like your club. My club is a like I've like a normal, like local club. So we've got people of all ages. So I can't do that. Um, so what I do is we we and I only have them once a week. So um, I just teach them the basics. We teach them some. You know, we do kirikaishi, we do some uchikomi, we do some uh, some technical practice, and then. It depends on them. Then I start to take a sort of more individual approach. And if they're if they're if they're young and they're ex, uh, excited about like maybe competing or something like that, then then maybe there's a route to push them a bit harder. But if they're you know a little bit later in life, come to kendo and they they're, they're sort of doing it very recreationally, then we'll keep it at that sort of pace. Because uh, everyone's you know. Like university students, perhaps, you know, they might be very competitive. They might want to join team tournaments and stuff like this. But you get like a local club, normal club. It's not often on the on the agenda for a lot of people. They just want to do something once a week with their time. So. Um, and why is it that every Kendall teacher does the endless talking thing? <laughs> Tell me about it. Tell me about it. They love the sound of their own voice, I think. And I think I think what it is, right, is I think there's a I think there's a situation where people have a tendency to like to, um, what can I say, like impress on others that they're knowledgeable and skilled or whatever. So I think that there is a tendency to look, look everybody, look, let me show you how much I know about this or, or whatever. Um, yeah, I do see it a lot and I do think that it's, it's you know, it, of course it's, it's important to explain it's important to explain, but it's, it's also very important to let them do so. I try to keep explanations uh, concise, 
and uh, to the point and clear, clear. Um, I really don't like to explain things when I'm teaching kendo, whether it's at my dojo, whether it's a seminar, whether it's at a national team training, whatever. I don't like to, I don't like my, uh, I like my explanations to contain as little ambiguity as possible. So I like them to be clear and easy to understand, even if it's something of a difficult topic. All right. So maybe we have to talk about, uh, I did something a few weeks ago at our, our national team tra training, trying to, trying to encourage the players to understand the concept of time it a little bit more all right but i showed him it first all right and i showed him it by what i did was uh like i don't mean showed him like i did it i mean i got them all to stand in the cutting distance and then i had a whistle it's the electric whistle that cross and the first whistle they have to go yeah like this and on the second whistle they have to hit men but they're not allowed to hit men until the second whistle all right so they do it three times. So first one, P, yeah, P, man. Okay, good. Then turn around, start again. P, yeah, P, man. This way, yeah. Okay, good. Then third one, P, yeah. And then I'm not pressing the whistle yet. And everyone's, everyone's chomping at the bit. Everyone's wanting to go. Everyone's wanting to hit. And then finally, some people can't hold it. And some people try to hit, even though the whistle's not there. And they're, ah, oh, this way. And then, P, man, this way, okay? And then I could gather them around and say, okay, you see that feeling? That feeling where you were waiting for the whistle, you wanted to hit, but you, you know, you were ready, you wanted to, but you're having to hold back. That's Tammy, okay? That's, that's, the, the, that's, the, that's the idea of Tammy, okay? And that, that was something that I was able to demonstrate to them, all right, without trying to, trying to give them a philosophy lecture, you know? Um, so these are, these, the, this is something I think is really, really important if you want to keep people's attention. Um, you know. Uh, hello, if you I have a quick Japanese language question. Uh, is there a contextual difference between Kikentai no Ichi and Kikentai Ichi? <coughs> um, if so, uh, which is more appropriate in a given setting? Get, uh, greatest Kendo videos in the universe, multiverse, <laughs> omniverse, and freeverse. Thank you for all you do. Okay, great. Um, uh, uh, I think when you have Kikentai no Ichi, and by the way, I'm just gonna, we're gonna add the extra C there. You could change that to a T if you wanted, all right? Because it's not Ichi, it's Ichi. Uh, it's different. Um, so uh, it's basically just dropping the particle, right? So if we write in Japanese, Kikentai, yeah, this is it. Not Ichi, like this, okay? This is, this is Ichi, yeah? Yeah, well, this is Ichi. Okay, so together. Um, and what you're talking about is Kentai Ichi. This one. Um, and it's just a difference between uh, having this note particle and not. Um, so uh, I'm going to need to check this. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. Uh, so <laughs> I had to just quickly go and check that with uh, with my wife Miyuki uh, to confirm that what I thought was correct, and it was all right. It was correct. So uh, yeah, um, there's no real important difference. <laughs> uh, uh, some people say this one kikentai no ichi, and some people say kikentai ichi, uh, and it's it's just whether they decide to use this particle or not. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't have an important uh, distinction. I think it just depends on the person that's talking. Some people prefer to talk in a certain way and others in a different way. Um, and I think it's just that. But uh, the intrinsic meaning of both is the same. Uh, this particle doesn't change the meaning um, in any way. Uh, but um, in my experience, this is a more common one. The no is more common, um, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, um, there's, there's, no, there's no huge important... Uh, difference between all right so i wouldn't worry about it too much okay next one uh kendo uh, kendo yeah <laughs> thank you for the opportunity to ask questions i get confused sometimes all the time about requirements passing exams some teachers tell me that you have to get you call that that's the valid strike yeah to pass tachirai that's when you do the people call, often call it jigeko at the grading it's not actually called jigeko it's called tachirai um however uh others tell me that as long as i uh, apply a proper semi 
uh, and display the right candle for the level, keep Zanshin, uh, so even if I miss attack, it can be considered enough for passing. Teachers who tell me are all six or seven dan, so I'm a little confused. Your opinion about it would be great. Well, it's really difficult to answer this because it depends on the context of the grading you're talking about, all right? Um, I think it's, I think it's, um, as a, you know, I don't think it's a requirement, and it's certainly not listing the requirements, um, to, to demonstrate proper semi, <laughs> uh, for like shodan or nidan, yeah. But once you start getting to like yondan, godan, rokudan, yeah, you're gonna have to start to show semi. And yes, you have to get the yu kodatotu. You have to make a valid strike. Um, I don't think you're gonna. I think you'll struggle to pass the grading. Uh, uh, um, certainly, I'd say any level after nidan, um, if you aren't able to make at least one valid strike in your tachi ai. Um, you have to try to make one, and yes, you have to have to keep zanshin. Um, but look, I think I think I'll be honest, right? I don't think you need to worry about it all that much. Um, I don't like the idea of like, uh, like trying to practice to pa pass pass the grade and exam. Um, these things are the correct things to do in Kendall for your Kendall to be successful. All right. So once you get to a certain point. Until you until you pass Sandan, you have to focus on your technical ability. Make sure you have strikes that are uh, valid with Kikentai no Ichi, as we just talked about. Um, accurate, a variety of techniques. You're able to do lots of different techniques. You're able to do attacking uh, techniques, uh, Ojiwaza. You're able to do Hikiwaza. You're able to do all these things by third Dan. You should be able to do and do them well and accurately. Um, then once you receive a third Dan, then you have to learn when to hit. Okay, and the context of when you're hitting. So you have to be able to uh, uh, understand semi, you have to be able to have, um, you know, good uh, understanding of, uh, you have to start to understand the I, the rationale, the relationship between you and your partner. Okay, and then, and then that's the same almost all the way through. You just have to raise the quality of what you're doing up to then, okay? So probably not the answer you wanted, but I, I don't think it's like specific for grading. If you want to win Shia, you have to do that as well, right? You have to do that as well. Of course, the tactics are different in the actual exam to what you might do in Shia, right? But um, overall, the ability of your Kendo is the same. Okay, next one. Uh, hey, Sensei, more of a language question this week. Uh, another one. Uh, your favorite, I know. <laughs> Watching day 11 of the sumo and uh, was a uh, win by Kirikaishi and I was wondering how that term translates over. I don't think ours means twisting backwards knee trip. <laughs> Pick for reference, thanks. Okay, so uh, yeah, um, there is a waza in uh, sumo called Kirikaishi. I did a bit of research on this uh, and it's the same Kirikaishi as we, in terms of the wording that we use in Kendall, but of course it's a completely different thing. Um, this word kirikaishi is used in Japanese uh, language quite a lot. Uh, not a lot, but there's quite a few usages, usages of it. Uh, for example, if, you, if you're going to turn your car around, if you're going to turn your right car around and you can't make it in one turn, so you turn and then you have to stop and reverse a bit and then make the turn again, that's also called kirikaishi. So uh, <laughs> it's a whole different stuff. Um, so uh, it's not the same. Um, in sumo, I had a bit of a look and it looks like it's like, apparently like you put your knee sort of behind the other person's knee and then push them this way. So I guess, I, I don't know how, I don't know. But uh, in kendo, kirikaishi, or is it sometimes called uchikaishi, uh, it's about you hit and then return and turn around and hit the other side. It's your tekubi, your wrists, or kaisu, this, is, this turn of the wrists is essentially the image of kirikaishi. All right, so it's, it's about this moving the wrist this way um is the is the, the the idea of the wording of the kirikaishi yeah but it's not connected in any way to the word they use in sumo okay <laughs> uh right uh next one hello sensei we have a number of kids doing kendo at dojo they're aged between 9 and 12 and are in bulgur good uh, after drilling with various keiko types okay here we go i'm going to start correcting you yokusuko I think what you're trying to say is yakusoku. Yakusoku, yakusoku. Okay, yakusoku is when you say, when it means promise and it means like, okay, uh, we're gonna practice five times men, okay? That's yakusoku de keiko, right? 
Uh, uch, uchikomi, that's correct. And kikari, kakari, okay? Kakari, kakari geiko, yeah? Um, we started doing some light gigeiko. There's no hard, there's no soft G in Japanese. It's a J. Jigeiko with them. Uh, however, it seems uh, the longer adult size shinai can be a bit intimidating for them. Should I switch to a smaller shinai when doing keiko with them? Uh, what size would you recommend? If not the shinai, how else can I encourage them to be more courageous and attack more? Um, I don't think it's the shinai that's a problem. <laughs> I don't think it's the shinai that's a problem. Um, you could do that, and I've seen people in Japan do that before, but it's pretty rare. Um, almost all the people I know that teach kids, and including me when I was teaching kids there, um, we just use the standard 39 shinai. Uh, it's not, they shouldn't be intimidated by that. Um, so you have to use your voice more. When you're giving them keiko, you have to encourage them to hit you, all right? And it doesn't mean you always have to let them hit you, but you have to encourage them to hit you, all right? And then after they hit you, they must you must make sure that it's a good quality strike. And if you don't let them hit you, then they must follow up with another strike. That's the key to practicing with children. Um, I really want to uh, sort of work on this a little bit, but it's a bit, I, I'd, I'd like to make a video on it, but I don't really know how to do it. Um, well, actually I've got a video on how to teach kids. I've already done it. I did it with, with my kids when they were younger. So go and have a look at that. And that's, that's if you practice with them like that, then you'll be able to get them to attack more. All right, but you have to use your voice during the keiko as well, yeah? Come on, come on now, hit, hit, go, come on. All right, and stuff like that. You know, rather, what you don't want to do, the worst thing you can do when you're, trying, when you're practicing with kids is practice with them like it's a competition and try to hit them, all right? Of course you can hit them, of course you can hit them, but you have to hit them at the point where they're like not concentrating or you can do the debana on them, um, but you have to get them to hit you, all right? Your job is to raise them up, it's not to compete with them. And that's the worst thing you can do when you practice with kids, all right? Uh, or young people as well, all right? Teenagers too, teenagers too. <clears throat> I, only just, I only just started to sometimes do the competitive Keiko with my eldest daughter, who's 16, and she's just been in the world championships, all right? Not, you know, and it's only just recently I started to do that, okay? Um, before that, and even, it's not all the time, you know, it's not all the time, still, my folk, my main focus in practicing with her isn't to try and beat her, it's to, if we do Ippon I try, I have to try and beat her now, because if I don't, she, she'll, she'll get me. <laughs> but uh, if, you know, during the normal Keiko, um, my goal is to bring her up, right? Hello, Sensei. I hate talking about money, but here it goes. He's a regular sponsor of competitions, organizer of Keiko Kai's, and head of dojo. A head of a dojo. How much does it usually cost to hold a one day kendo event? What sort of help is usually out there in the UK? <laughs> okay, so if we're talking in the context of the UK, all right. Um, well, um, I don't think there's much help out there. <laughs> I don't think there's much help out there. Uh, I don't know of any anyway, but um, mo the general going rate for hiring a sports hall, depending on the size of it, but like uh, if you one that could fit about 20 people in is about £25 an hour, um, 25 British pounds an hour, I guess that's like 27 euros or probably around $30 um, or about uh, or about 50 million Japanese yen at the minute because... <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but um, if you wanted to like to hire a big hall, I think if it depends on the place and where it is um, and how big it is and stuff like that. I think you're probably looking between if you wanted to hire it for two full days for a weekend, you're probably looking at least 500 to it could, I reckon it could be anywhere between 500 and 1500 pound and it could potentially be more. Um, if uh, if if it's in a like a capital city or something like that, um, the the one I hire sometimes up here in the northwest to do our Gordo Geiko, they usually they're usually about twenty five pound an hour, um, and if I hire the big hall uh, to do a seminar or something like that, then I think that was around six hundred pound for the weekend, something like that. Um, so it's quite expensive. It's quite expensive. Um, <clears throat> the best the best is just to ask them. Uh, okay, we're nearly there, nearly there, nearly there. Uh, how important are promo promotion tests? There are common beliefs that ranks don't matter much. Some say that Q Kendoka can win against downgrade holders in some tournaments, and they argue that taking tests doesn't do anything. 
What are your thoughts on this? <laughs> uh, I found it strange that Kendoka are so motivated and excited in practices at the dojo and then get very quiet and don't perform as well in tournaments or their tests. What do you think about this? Okay, uh, promotion tests, so Dan gradings are extremely important. In fact, they're crucial if you want to progress past a certain point in Kendo. They're crucial, they're necessary, they're necessary. Um, it doesn't mean that you win more competitions. That's a different thing. It's a different thing. And of course, there are situations where Q, Q level Kendoka can beat the Dan level can, Kendoka. Um, I think that's exceptionally rare if, the, if you're talking like second or EQ, first Q, and the opponent is fifth Dan or sixth Dan. I think that's probably pretty rare. Um, but it could happen below that, certainly. Um, but it doesn't. It doesn't mean that. Uh, it doesn't mean that the Q Kendoka is more skilled. It means they managed to hit an Ippon in a specific time. Um, Ken doesn't work like that. With, you know, your opponents aren't bosses that you have to defeat and over. You know, and 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 move past. You know, um, it doesn't work like that. Um, and it's easy to think, think like that. And when you're young, you think like that too, especially if you become very competitive. Once you manage to beat someone in the Shi'ai, you think, okay, that's them done. I can beat that person now. And actually, it doesn't work like that. It's, you beat that person once on that specific day. It doesn't mean you always beat them every time. Now, of course, sometimes it might mean like that, but it doesn't always mean that. It's just not how it works. It's much more organic than that. Now, um, promotion tests are extremely important because they... Um, they are part of the development cycle of Kendall uh, that you have to walk in order to um, to properly progress. Um, this is why the most successful Kendall guy in the world, whether it's in, in, in competition, shall we say, are also very successful in the Dan gradings. Um, because you have to, it, 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 like Shi'ai, like doing competition, it's, it's an important part of the path that helps you level up. Um, now, well, you said this common belief that ranks don't matter much. The rank itself doesn't matter, all right? Um, and it doesn't matter in the way that lots of people assume it matters. Um, people people so, shouldn't follow what I say, for example, like if I teach or something or whatever I say on this channel, should, you shouldn't follow what I say because I've got the whatever done. Right now I've got sixth done. Because I've got that, you should do what I say. This, that's nonsense. That's total nonsense. Um, you should follow what I say if it resonates with you and you think it's, it's correct, yeah? Um, you shouldn't, because I'm the sixth Dan, you should follow. Uh, it doesn't really work like that. Um, and the ranks don't matter in that regard um, because it doesn't, you know, it just meant that you could pass the test. You were de able to demonstrate something at a specific point. It doesn't mean that everything you say uh, is correct or that you're right about something. Um, but it does, of course, it does, of course, at the same time signify that you do have a certain level of experience in kendo as well. And that, of course, is to be respected. Um, but I just, it, it's not a badge of honour. Yeah. Um, to me, the Dan grading is a very personal road to tread. It's not, I have this, so, you know, you have to listen to me sort of thing. And of course it's, you know, uh, unfortunately I feel like I have to, um, I have to like um, use it sometimes um, because in the West, like people care about that. Like some people won't listen to you unless they know what Dan grade you are or something like that. And that's wrong as well. Um, so, uh, sometimes I have to like say that or sometimes I have to accept that I'm introduced as the whatever Dan or something like that. But I don't like it, if I'm honest. I don't like it. I don't like using my Dan as a Dan grade as a benchmark of my ability or knowledge <clears throat> because I don't think that that's appropriate. Um, but I think it's important that Kendoka strive to challenge the Dan grades as a personal method of progress. And I think it's vital, actually. And if you don't, you stagnate. Absolutely, you stagnate. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And of course, it's. It, I think it's normal that um, Kendoka might feel very motivated or excited in practices, and then when they get to a tournament or their Dan grades test, that they they don't perform because they're nervous. <laughs> um, and people handle nerves in different ways, and I think that's quite normal. I think that's quite normal, to be honest. Um, I really do. Uh, last one. Hi, do you have any fun or humorous stories from this or previous WKCs you'd be willing to share? 
Pono humor stories from the WKC. Um, I don't think so, you know. Um, so I don't, I don't really think so. Um, the WKC, like, uh, I remember my first WKC was kind of funny. Um, the, um, I don't know if it's really that funny, but the, the Sayonara party was like really short, which was kind of funny. Um, like we got to this fine hour party and it was like, welcome to the sign hour party. Uh, the first bus will, uh, the first bus to take you back to the hotel will depart in 45 minutes, something like that. It was, it was like, wow, <laughs> we just got here. Like, um, and then, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I can't think of anything. Um, certainly not that, uh, I think I want to share on YouTube. <laughs> I've had some fun times at WKC and it's a brilliant, amazing and wonderful event. It really is. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, it's a very interesting event because obviously it's very, very high pressure, high tension, uh, nerves run high, um, emotions run high. Um, it really is a wonderful, wonderful tournament. And it is the, it's the best, it's the best event in, in Kendall, um, actually. Uh, and I've been to pretty much all of them. Um, to some degree. Um, the All Japan Championships is also brilliant. It really is wonderful, but it's not the same as the WKC. The WKC is different. Um, the, the, the All Japan's is great. I know this isn't your question, but um, the All Japan's is great. It is, but it's in a, diff a totally different way. The All, All Japan's is very tense. Like the All Japan Championships is very, very tense. It's like a, it's like a, it's like, the, it's like a golf tournament. Like, you know, uh, there's there's not a lot of like whoa you know and come on and that sort of thing. I know you're not supposed to shout, but like you know it's like someone goes and puts like, oh, you know it's not that bad. It's not that bad, but it's just it's very very tense. It's it's very very tense, um, and it's wonderful in its own way. It's wonderful, and I love it very much. Um, but the WKC is like um, the only thing that's kind of close to WKC in terms of like. Is, is the Kyoto Taiga. I love the Kyoto Taiga as well because that's also like a festival of Kendo as much as anything else. Um, the Kyoto Taiga is like a, is more of a festival of Kendo actually. Um, but the WKC has a, has an element of that as well. There's a sort of feeling of everybody coming together, seeing people you haven't seen for a long time or meeting new people, uh, experiencing Kendo with all sorts of different people from around the world, seeing everybody from around the world get together and do Kendo together. Um, it's just, it's, it's a really wonderful, wonderful event. Um, and I love it very much, very close to my heart. Um, so yeah, but no, no fun or humor stories, I'm afraid, uh, on that. Um, I've got a few from me, Casey, but I'm not going to share them on this channel either. Anyway, there we go. We finished for today. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you, uh, have a wonderful weekend filled with Kendall ahead of you and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.